In this Fusion 360 tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a captive nut joint for use on a laser cutter. This type of joint joins two pieces together and has a bolt go through one piece, and then it has a slot in the other piece where the nut can't spin. This way you can tighten the bolt down and have a snug, secure fit between two planar pieces. This also allows you to quickly assemble and take apart your laser cut project. To get started, we're going to create a component. We'll call this bolt board. Then we'll create a sketch on the ground plane. I'll make a center point rectangle. I'll click on the origin and quickly dimension this 100 by 100 millimeters. Let's click modify change parameters and we'll make some parameters. For example, we'll make ply. This will be three millimeters and we'll say, okay. Then we need to add some holes for the bolts to go through. So let's draw some circles. I'll draw a circle here, and I'll draw a circle here. You can have as many as you want, but two will be enough to show you how this works. We want these circles to be exactly the same size, and then we want to align them over the midpoint. We can do that with the vertical constraint. Click the center of the circle, then the origin, the center of the circle, and the origin. And then we can dimension them away from the origin. So we'll click Align here, and we'll just make it D2 divided by four, and the same thing here, we'll click, and then we'll click this. That way they're centered. And the last thing we need to do is give them a size. For this, let's use three millimeter bolts, type three. And now we have our holes. We'll finish our sketch. We'll press E to extrude, click this face, and then type ply. So now we have a board with two holes for bolts going through it. Let's go ahead and click the top level component and we'll make a new component. We'll call this nut board. We'll create a sketch and we'll create it right on the face of this board. Now let's make a rectangle. We can create another center point rectangle. So I'll click rectangle, center rectangle. I'll click on the origin and I'll drag up. Sometimes this doesn't get coincident, so if it's not, make sure you click your constraints. We'll give it a dimension of ply. Now it should be fully constrained. We can go ahead and extrude it. We'll click this, 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 and this, and then we will extrude up 100. Now we have a board with two holes, and now we need to add these bolts. So let's create another sketch, but this time on the side of the nut board. We want to project in these two circles, so press P. We can rotate to the bottom, and we can click these two circles. We say OK. Then when we look at our sketch, notice that we have these circles that we can reference from. There are two ways to draw these. I'll draw both ways. One way is to make a rectangle and then cross it with a rectangle. Then we need to line up some things. So click the coincident constraint, click this point and this edge, this point and this edge. Then we need to dimension our bolt. An M3 hex nut is 5.5 wide and it's 2.4 tall. So now this is the space that the nut will occupy. We need to make sure that this is constrained. There's two ways to do that. We could draw a line and make it perpendicular. We can also make the midpoints of these on top of each other. To do that, click the vertical constraint, hold shift, click this midpoint, and this midpoint, and it'll constrain them in that direction. Then I like to have at least the thickness of the material in between the edge and where the nut will be. So I'll click here and type ply. And this distance needs to be ply plus how long the bolt is, plus a little bit of space. For this, I'm going to be using a 10 millimeter bolt. So I'll dimension from here to here. It will be 11 millimeters, which will give it space minus ply, because the bolt is going through one ply thickness. Now we have everything we need to cut this out. The downside of doing it this way is when you make your extrude, you have to click five pieces. That's okay. Let me show you the other way to do it. You can also do it just by drawing lines. So click here, draw up, then draw over, then draw up, then draw over, then draw up, then over, then down, then over, then down, then over, then down again. Make sure all of them are perpendicular. Click the collinear constraint, 
and we can make these collinear. Then we can click the coincident constraint and click this point and this line and this point and this line. We still need to dimension, so we'll dimension this 2.4, and we'll dimension from here to here is 5.5. So we need to dimension how far over this is. So we can press D, click here, click here, go up, type parentheses, and we'll click this distance. We'll subtract three, because that's how wide the bolt is. Then we'll divide by two. Then we'll dimension this away, ply. And this one will be the same way. So we'll click here and here, and then we'll dimension this. 11 minus ply. So that's two different ways of getting the same result. We'll finish our sketch. We'll press E to extrude. We'll click each of these pieces. Then we'll rotate around and we'll type negative ply. We'll click our top level. And so the bolt will go straight through here. And then the nut spins here. So this is a great way to make captive nut joints. And you might have noticed that we didn't add any tolerance because usually you can squeeze it in to plywood. If you need a bit of tolerance, you can add that into your dimensions. Hopefully you can make captive nuts quickly on your laser cut projects.